I'm Jason Belzer for Athletic Director U. Today we are in Jacksonville, Alabama, and I'm joined by Coach John Graz, the head football coach at Jacksonville State University. John, thank you for joining us today. Glad to be on. Appreciate you having me. So, John, you have built what can only be described as a dynasty here at Jacksonville State. You have been here entering your fifth season, uh, and in the last four years, you've won four OVC conference championships. Uh, you've gone 32 and 0 in conference. You've never lost to a, another FCS team in the regular season. Um, so essentially undefeated, uh, something that nobody in college football has been able to do during that same period. Um, more conference wins and uh, essentially a better record than than that school down south we call Alabama in uh, Tuscaloosa. So pretty amazing. Um, and so what I want to discuss with you today is not only how you've built this program, but discuss the importance of fit when it comes to head coaches at universities like Jacksonville State and around the country. So if you can give us a little bit of your background, uh, from what I understand, you grew up in Alabama, pretty much spent your entire career here. Uh, both as a high school coach and eventually as a college coach. Why don't you lead us through some of your background? Well, very, very blessed, number one, with all the success. And it's been, been, a, been a good ride here and looking forward to this season. You know what? This is home. You know, me and my wife both alumni at Jacksonville State. And, you know, after graduating here, just started high school coaching, did that for 20-plus years in Alabama. And, you know, been very successful, you know, most everywhere we've been. And, it, and it's a we deal. It's nothing that I've done, you know, personally. I think it's a we thing, and I think it's getting everybody bought in. And I think that's, you know, the reason I've been such a good fit here is, is just being able to get everybody bought in. and because anywhere you're at, it's, it's marketing your program because uh, it's about in college football, it's about recruiting and, and all those things. But, uh, you know, our career has been, you know, pretty successful in, in high school. That was fun. I was a little leery about getting out of high school football because I love Friday Night Lights, you know, the purity of the game and, you know, why I'm in coaching. And I like to see young men grow grow up and, uh, you know, with certain values that, that are going to lead them into, you know, better things uh, down the road, you know, being good husbands, uh, being good fathers, and being good, you know, solid citizens. And uh, so it's always been about for me and we'll continue to do that and we've been able to do that in in high school as along as well as here at Jacksonville State so that's kind of my career path uh, you know and it's been a been a been a good deal so how many different high schools did you coach at in the state of Alabama before you made it here wow let's see probably yeah I'd have to add it up I'd be but probably five you five know, different I, schools. I was at, at Oxford for five years right down the road before I came here I was at Spain Park several different stops but uh you know just uh, really good communities and I think anywhere you at we're in high school we're in college it's about getting everybody bought in you know from administration to fans to you know your players you got to get your players bought in but uh, I think this you know that's reason it's been a good deal here is this everybody's bought in everybody loves football here loves athletics it's a good college experience you know and uh, you get a good education but it's a true college experience with a college town town kind of revolves around the, the university and uh, that's that's a neat deal it's not that way everywhere but uh, sure. like I said it's, a, it's been a good deal so what led you to come back to Jacksonville State which is your alma mater um, what reason did you come back to to become an assistant here well, I mean, just an opportunity to get in college football. My college roommate, Bill Clark, gets a job. Uh, I'm at a point in my career where I'm a couple of years away from being able to double dip, which is pretty neat in high school football. I've got almost 25 in. So I said, well, we'll try this college thing out since it's my alma mater. And, you know, I know uh, it's going to be a good situation. And, uh, you know, tried it out and it was successful and ended up getting the head coaching job the next year. So uh, that's kind of what led me into, into doing that and, and really love the college deal. You know, I mean, it's been a, it's been a good deal. We've been able to do the same things, you know, mentor-wise with young men, changing young men's lives that we did in high school, we've been able to do that at the college level. And I think that's one of the things that made us so successful. But you know, I just thought it was a, a good timing for me to try it out, and it ended up working out really well. Sure. So you come in as an assistant for your former roommate, Bill Clark. Bill Clark then leaves to become the head football coach at UAB, UAB. and you're given the reins. What went through your mind when you took over that job? I mean, you're you know one year out of coaching high school football. Now you're the head coach 
of a college football team and you are responsible for a major program, all eyes on you. What was kind of the first thing that you did when you took over that program to make sure that you started laying a foundation for success for the future? Well, I mean, it's about the people around you. You know, of course, you got to get a staff. There's a lot of turnover. About everybody else went to UAB. So you had to, you know, put a staff together, and you're only as good as the people around you. So that was a big deal. But all my experience in being a head coach in high school, you know, really paid off at that time. Now, I would not advise that for somebody that, uh, you know, to come straight into college as a head coach. So I think being with, you know, that first year and him being at South Alabama for five plus years and gaining that experience with recruiting aspect. You know, in high school football, you feel like you know that game pretty well, you know, uh, because recruiters come in, but it's different in doing it. So, I mean, high college, you've got to be able to recruit. But I think, uh, you know, just putting a good team around me and just having that experience of marketing your program, uh, being a head coach before, uh, you know, really helped me during that time because the transition was really, really quick. It was the last two weeks of recruiting season you had to put a recruiting weekend together at that time and you know with a kind of a half staff deal and you know try to sign a class and salvage a class but that class has ended up being pretty pretty good and I kind of, kind of took off after that. So um, from a cultural standpoint what values did you kind of bring? Did you change things from what Bill was doing initially? Did you take some of the values that you had as a high school coach? Talk to me about that. What what kind of was the foundation of this is going to be John Graz's program? Right, a little bit of change. You know, I mean, some very similar to you know, me and him both started out coaching for his dad. Kind of a unique situation. So the blueprint of football is is you know a lot the same. You know, and things that we believe in, values that we believe in, and I, I think that works no matter where you're at if you do it the right way. And then kind of put my own stamp on it. Stamp on it. I think a lot of people get a head coaching job and and they kind of try to be somebody else. You know, I'm, I'm I, you know. I advise just be yourself, and that's what kind of what I've done, and you know, put my personal touch on it. You know, far as you know, that part of it, and it goes back to I think it's about whole person development. You know, and that's a big part of our program, and I think that's the stamp that that I took and and, and put on the program once I became the head coach. And whole person development says we worry about good people first. We recruit very good people. We, you know, hire very good people in our program. If that's a, a student assistant to a full-time guy, and you know, like it goes back to the people you put around you. And I think it's about developing those people on a daily basis uh, to challenge each other to be better. I tell recruits when you come in here, I want you to make me better every day. I will challenge you every day to be better, but I want you to make me better as well. So I think when you put good people in a in, in your program, uh, on your team, and uh, you develop them every day. I think you'd be very, very successful. Second part of that is the student. Uh, very first team meeting I had, I said, guys, listen, we're, we're going to have a, we're going to have a 3.0. I want to know when you're going to graduate, and uh, we're here to get education. I know every one of you think you're going to play in the NFL. But that's not going to come true for everybody. So it's going to be just going to help you be a better dad, a better husband, better community leader with that degree that you get. So we've been able to hold that 3.0 for almost four years. We were in a conference championship on the field, you know, uh, you know, several times. So not only on the on the field, but also in the classroom, that academic championship. So I'm very, very proud of that. So I, that student is a big part of that. So you know, number one, the person and develop, and number two, the student and develop that part, and number three, the player. I look at you, got to be a little crazy to play football anyway, you know, so these guys love ball, and uh, guys love coaching ball, they love playing ball, so the ball part of it's kind of easy. You know, we work extremely hard, uh, you know, off-season you know, conditioning as far as weight room, spring training, all those things. feel like that kind of gives us a leg up on how we do those things too. But, you know, that, that player, if you do number one, number two, Number three, kind of take care of itself. So, you know, we work in developing those three areas extremely hard every day. Now, I think a lot of people talk about doing those things. Uh, we talk about being doers and not talkers. So we don't talk about doing something, we actually do it. So, you know, like when we talked about the 3.0, we've actually held people accountable to doing that. So very, very proud of that and the academic success that we've had. So you mentioned again that you are somebody that has expectations that people are actually going to follow these values and, and come through. Can you, can you discuss this a little? And let's talk about it through the lens of when you go about hiring coaches. You've obviously had a very successful program. You've lost a lot of your assistance to bigger programs. In fact, you've had a number of assistants end up 
coaching at FBS schools, uh, including one that's now at Clemson. Um, and so that's actually a, a sign that uh, of great leadership, right? Because you're, you're cultivating and shepherding people to bigger and better things. How do you recruit and bring in the right personnel to be around you and build this program? And then how do you know when it's time for somebody to move on? I mean, whether it's in a bad way because maybe they've kind of hit their ceiling or in a good way because they're ready to move on and do bigger and better things. Well, we've had both of those, you know, and I think it goes back to looking for good people, number one. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of a lot of good coaches out there and a lot of great coaches out there. It may not be good people. We want good people, number one, that are, you know, well-rounded. You know, I look to hire somebody. I want somebody that's that good person first. But, they, you know, they're not just good at one thing. There's a lot of guys that are – they're great on the grass coaches, but they may, not, they may not be a great recruiter. They may not be a great marketer. They may not be very good with people off the field. So we want somebody that's balanced. You know, they're, they're good, you know, breakdown-wise and knowledge of the game, but they also can coach on the grass. They also can relate to people. They can market your program when they're on the road recruiting, wherever they're at. So I think you look for that well-rounded person that's not too heavy on one side or the other, but it's a really a balanced person. And then you want that person to grow. Uh, I like for people around me to grow with it, be players or coaches and there's been pick guys here I've said look you you've done all you do here you need to go find another job you need it's it's, it's time for you to go and uh, you know some guys you you don't want to lose like that but then I want all of them to better their self too you know, like for them to, if they got to go to be a head coach I want to give them the knowledge and, and the, the to be able to one day be a head coach and, and develop them to be that. And you got a lot of young guys that really want to do that. So I look at myself as kind of a mentor in that area of kind of teaching them, you know, how to do that. And uh, that's been a good deal. So uh, do you expect your your coaches to be in the office till 12 o'clock at night calling recruits? How, how does the culture of Jacksonville State football look like? Well, point? the culture of that is it's balance. And I think balance is, is a key to life, you know, because number one, it's about relationships. At the end of the day, no matter how much money we make, what job we have, what kind of house we live in, what kind of car we drive, all those things is about our relationships. We're accountable to that. You know, what kind of son are we? You know, what, what kind of friend are we? What kind of husband are we? What kind of, you know, dad are we? You know, you don't get a redo on being a dad. You know, so our guys, I don't, I don't want to be in the office from, you know, 7 o'clock in the morning, 12 o'clock at night. Now, there's times, playoff situations, certain games, you know, you, you may have to do that. I, I, I talk about this. You get the job done. There's a certain amount of work you got to do in football, and you, you've got to be able to get that done. Now, we want to do that as efficiently as we possibly can. But we will have that balance there to where it's not too much work. It's enough work. It's enough family time as well. So if you come in our, down our hall, uh, you know, you, you'll you see our kids running down the hall. It's a family environment. You know, uh, they'll come eat dinner with us sometimes before we go back to watching film, uh, allow guys to be a, be a dad, be a husband. So, But they also work extremely hard. And I believe this, that people work harder for you uh, you know, when you kind of let them have some freedom to get the job done. I'm not a micromanager type guy. You know, I don't want people to, and I call it this, you need to motivate people, and both ways work now. I mean, you can be, there's not only one way to be successful. You can either motivate out of fear, or you motivate out of love, and I motivate out of love. I want people to be, uh, you know, know that I care about them. I care about their families. I care about them being a good dad, a good husband, and I bet I care about them being a good coach too. So, you know, they got to be able to get the job done. But uh, you know, we 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 do meet. A certain amount of work you got to get done. Very very organized, uh, you know. But I think that uh, you know, guys know, uh, you know, they have the freedom to get the job done. And, and once we get it done, we're gone. I'm not going to sit there and watch the clock to, you know, 11 o'clock or 10 o'clock or, or midnight and say, hey. Oh, okay, so it's 11 now, guys. We, we can go home. You know, I think it's when you get your work done, you're gone. And uh, we have a pretty pretty good routine of how we get that done. And there's a lot of balance in that, I think, too. I like for guys to be able to you know, take your kids to school in the morning. Talk to me about recruiting. You have had some phenomenal success in the recruiting world. Um, I think we looked at an analysis, and you have recruited or received commitments from players um, over 20 other FBS institutions. So you're on the FCS level. You're out recruiting SEC schools, Conference USA schools, Sun Belt schools, which is uh, essentially unheard of in a lot of ways. How have you convinced student athletes to come play for you at Jacksonville State? Well, I think it goes back to that culture that you was talking about. It's the culture we have, you know, with the people we have. We have a good people out selling our program and marketing our program. But I think it's just being you, you know. And I, I think that, uh, you know, being a people person. And I think when people come into our hallway and they meet our folks and they see what we're doing, I always tell kids, it's like I told high school kids, you go ask the players there what's going on and they'll tell you. 
you know, coach tell you anything to get you. You go ask the players what's going on. So I think a program kind of speaks for itself and it sells itself. When a person, a family walks through the door, they immediately feel that we're genuine. You know, we're not trying to sell them something. And I tell recruits all the time, hey, we are who we are. This is the way we do this. This may be for you and it may not be for you. You may be for us and you may not be for us. So, uh, and try to be honest with the kids. You know, if a kid's got a chance, he's got a dream, he wants to go play at Florida State, I will try and help him to get there, just like I did when I was in college. And uh, it was in high school ball, trying to get a kid in the next level. So I think it's it's being genuine with that person and, and being honest with them and, you know, uh, kind of, you know, showing them who we are. We don't negatively recruit. A lot of people out there negatively recruit. You know, we sell what we got and don't worry about what somebody else is doing. Sure. How do you uh, stay ahead of the competition? I mean, to go undefeated in the conference for four straight years is incredible. Um, and you have not only gone undefeated, but you've essentially dominated the conference. It's not like you're winning close games. Um, you're pretty much winning by blowouts. How are you staying ahead of all of these other coaches? And talk to me a bit about what you've learned. You obviously have very good relationships, close relationships. You've even, you've been coached side by side with some coaches in the SEC. Um, what have you learned from some of the other coaches in the state of Alabama and elsewhere that have allowed you to um, be so competitive and at such a high level here? Well, in coaching, we've always wanted to stay ahead of the game. You know, I've always prided myself on, on being a great X and O coach and being knowledgeable and being ahead of where the curve is and, you know, set the trend and, and not be, uh, you know, be a trendsetter and not, you know, just following the trend type deal. So we're always, all three phases of the game, you know, very, very much very well coached and uh, very solid in what we do, but a fundamental coach as well. And, you know, there's a lot, of, a lot of great offensive schemes out there, a lot of great defensive schemes out there, but it boils down to blocking and tackling. So we pride ourselves in the way we practice and being a great blocking and tackling team because nine times out of ten the best team on the field team that wins the games the team that blocks the best and the team that tackles the best outside of turnovers so look at look back at that statistically and that's, that's usually the fact but uh, I think recruiting goes back to that too you got to have great players it don't matter what I know on that board or how good I am X and O wise uh, you know those players are the ones that wins the game so you got to get great players in and I always said this when I was coaching high school football boy if I never pick my own we be really good so I think it goes into getting you know kids you know bought in and signing with you and coming in and then develop them as a player I think we do a really good job we try to redshirt all our guys so you know we try to you know get that extra year out of them and, and uh, you know, I know a lot of people don't do that nowadays but we try to redshirt our guys and I think it gives them that extra year to develop them and get them ready to play. Sure. So I had spoken to uh, one of your former high school players, and he had mentioned he now works for you, uh, and he had mentioned that, um, you know, one thing that you have stayed true to is, is being authentic, that the same coach that was coaching him in high school was the one that was uh, leading his team to the national championship game a few years ago. How important is being authentic, and, and what does that really mean in, in the grander scheme of being a coach and being sus sustaining excellence? Well, I think it means a lot. I mean, I, I think it's staying true to, to who you want to be, and it goes back to those relationships. You know, I don't, I don't think, uh, you know, where I'm at is going to change who I am. You know, I want to be the same person and be that genuine person and, and be that friend that I need to be, be that mentor that I need to be. And, and I think a lot of people get their why messed up. You know, my why is not going to get messed up no matter where I'm at. You know, I, I, I do it for the same reason. I'm very, you know, com compelled and compassionate and, and just excited about, you know, being a part of changing people's lives and, and being a part of those people's lives and life's ever changing you know you don't have those guys but so long so you know what I do with that relationship is very very important to me and how that I influence them. Sure. So um, what do you think some common misconceptions are uh, of being a head football coach particularly in the state of Alabama um, you know a lot of people say that head football coaches around here have quite a bit of power and uh, often you know run the schools and um, you know, have a lot of sway. Do you think that's true, and uh, or do you think that that's just part of the success and, and the expectations in this state of being successful um, and kind of overseeing the brand of a university? Right, I think that um, you know definitely you can get that out of line for sure. It's as important as football is in the South, and particularly Alabama. You know, we live and die by it sometimes, and yeah, you know, but it, is, it goes back to it is a game. You know, and I've always tried to make myself a part of whatever university school that I'm at, just uh, a part of that university. You know, and then uh, no bigger, no no smaller than the other. Everything's important. You know, and I think that the college experience for for kids and students is is important, but it's well rounded. I think. Yeah. You know, 
don't think you can get that out of line. And but I would say that is a misconception, especially when you talk about me. I, I'm, I'm very concerned about our university as a whole and developing it for the good. And football is a big part of that, but it's not the only part of that. And I think you can get that out of line really quick. Sure. Um, if you can give one or two pieces of advice for other college programs, athletic directors, coaches who want to build a successful program and emulate some of the things that you've done at Jacksonville State, what, what would that be? Well, I think first and foremost, it, it goes back to, and I think a lot of people in athletics in general get this out of line, they don't put the kids first. And we got jobs because of the players, you know. So I, I think every every decision you make, the player ought to come number one, and and not some uh, ulterior motive or you know personal gain or things like that. I think you put the player first, and if you general you know, genuinely do that, I think you're gonna make the right decisions. And uh, from the people you hire, the way you market your program, all those things. And uh, like I said, I got a job because you know, I'm responsible for 125 young men, and what I do with them in those four or five years that they're here really really matters but that'd be my first advice and I think sometimes we make the game a little bit too much of a business you know I think it's about that college experience and getting that degree and you know being that real well-rounded person and I think we're losing that a little bit that you know we got to protect the you know the integrity of our game because it gets attacked every day so I'm a big proponent of protecting the integrity of the game and and keeping it as pure as you can keep it and, and keeping it in check and in, in, in that aspect um, is there anything that you do today as a coach that you didn't do when you were a high school coach or even when you were a college head coach here a couple of years ago? I don't know. I mean, I think it's pretty much the same. It hasn't changed really with a lot of the things that we do. Uh, you know, a few, few X and O things may have changed, but daily, on a daily basis, how you treat people I think matters. From, from the, the custodian to the, the person that's you know working in the calf to whatever, I think if you go around campus, you'll see that uh, you know pretty much everybody knows me. They feel like I'm I'm their best friend. I hope you know, they feel like I speak to them and all those things. But I think it goes back to how you treat people, sure. and I think that's that's uh, means a lot. I think a lot of people don't don't have that genuineness to them. But I, I think I've always tried to do that, and uh, but I don't think it's a lot different. I, I have fun coming to work. I've always had fun coming to work. Don't feel like I've ever worked a day of my life, really, because I'm, I'm passionate about what I do. Sure. Well, John, this was a, a very introspective discussion, and I appreciate you giving us some time to, to talk about how you've built this great program and, uh, and what other programs can do to kind of emulate what you've done here to, to build a championship culture. Thanks a lot. Appreciate you having me on. Thank you, John.